precious name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for waking us up, everybody up this morning to see another day come to church. Yes. Praise God. Um, we thank you for our pastor and our first lady. Yes, we want to thank you for letting us be here today, Lord God. Um, we pray for everybody that's on their way. Um, we want to pray that the sermon is good and everybody learn. Something good from the sermon. Amen. 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 Hey guys, turn your Bibles to Matthew 19. 19. Verses 25 to 27. If you have it, say amen. 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 When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, Which is possible with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsake all and follow thee. We shall be four. Amen. Amen. Now I lead you in the hands of our youth choir.
Say, I know a man. I know a man who understands all of the problems, of the problems that we come against. That we he holds in his hands all of the power it will take to deliver us from all of them. Say, I know a man. I know a man who understands all of the problems that we come against. He holds in his hands. All of the power it will take to deliver us from all of them. He is.
if I find favor.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. I want to be where you are, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't our youth choir sound good? Amen. Just praising God from their heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's offering time right now. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our offering. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just to remind everybody, amen, that if you want to give a portion of the anniversary offering, amen, you can do that today. Amen. If you want to pay towards it, amen, we already know that it's $100 per month, amen. But if you want to do increments of that, you can. Amen. This is the time. Anytime we have an offering to offering service, we can do that. Amen. Amen. So right now it's time for tithes and offering. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. Now, the, the anniversary offering is going to go inside the, the blue envelopes. Amen. Okay. So we want to make sure that we separate that. Amen. Everybody feeling good? Everybody's okay? Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward for today's message. Amen. Amen. I can use it. Amen. So, amen, I need the help. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm looking forward to God helping me today. Amen? I'm talking about for myself because I need the help. Amen? Amen. So right now, I just want everybody to just get ready. Give cheerfully. Amen? And God will bless you. Amen? We're going to have a song from our very own youth choir. Come on. Everybody, please stand. Everybody, please stand and follow the directions of the usher to the rear. Amen.
I'm glad I'm saved, man. I'm glad I'm saved. Glad I am saved. Glad I'm saved. Praise the Lord, everybody. Who in, who in here? Who in here want to backslide? Come on, don't, I mean, don't be afraid. Who in here, who in here thinking about backsliding? Who in here got enough? Who in here? Anybody? Y'all sure, nobody in here wants to backslide. Everybody cool. You know? I don't, I don't, I don't know why a person want to backslide, man. This is, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. I mean, I, I, I work, I work. Come on, y'all, stop talking. Listen to me. I work hard at, at, at instructing you all. Ain't nothing in that world out there. You know, I think one time I had the young people, I said, tell me, what do you think you want? I think I had a lot of us up here. I said, we can tell you. We can tell you what all kind of drugs are do, what they taste like, what they make you feel like. Amen. All you, all you, all you brothers, y'all want to go out and sleep with different kind of women? We can tell you. When they all get naked, they're all the same. 
Amen. Men, women, can't y'all tell the girls about that with men? See, y'all ain't honest. See, women don't like to say, y'all know good and well y'all was a bunch of whores like the men was whores. I don't see what the problem is. Y'all need to tell these girls, them men ain't no good out there. What y'all embarrassed to tell them for? Then when they go out and mess around, then you're going to tell them, that boy ain't no good. Tell them now. I'll wait till they get laid to tell them to come back home pregnant. Now you're going to tell them. You should have told them from the jump street. I tell you, girls. Ain't no man, all men are dogs. Jeremiah and Joseph is a dog. Amen. Ain't it an awesome? They, they, they puppies. They don't be dogs. Hey, brothers, ain't no, listen, men ain't no good. Ain't no good. All they want to do, girls, is get y'all laid, and then they're going to go and boast about what they did. Ain't no need of, ain't no need of y'all make it. Listen, the rules, the rules in the world ain't changed because we done got old. I'm giving you the rules of the world. So I don't want y'all to go out there. I don't want y'all backslide. I don't want y'all going out in the church. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care how good they comb their hair, Sarah. I don't care how fine and muscular they are. They still are a bow wow. They're a dog. The only man, the only man that ain't a dog is going to date you like a young lady and marry you. If he do anything else before he does that, he's a dog. Straight up. And that's the way you say it. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> no confusion in that. Amen. Uh, y'all, I, I don't want y'all, listen, listen, young people, it's y'all day. And I don't want y'all messing up, man. I don't want y'all messing up. I don't know, I don't know how to be more forward than that. You know? Y'all done, all of y'all that, that messed around or make thinking of how many men and boys rather than hugged and rubbed and kissed on you and then as soon as you turn your back they open another girl face oh baby you know we just friend no the negro line he trying to get both of y'all in the bed and then he got one around his neighborhood you don't know nothing about and he got one in palmdale that he go visit every now and then you don't know nothing about y'all leave Y'all leave it alone. It ain't no good, man. I'm just trying to tell you, it ain't no good. That ain't my message. It's part of it. It'll incorporate it, but come on, Romans chapter 12. When I get y'all young people together, I'm going to tell y'all they ain't no good. Take it from an ex-dog. Y'all, y'all like y'all like that. Y'all all that. <laughs> I got, got a lot of conversation about that, huh? Amen. All right, come on, Romans chapter twelve. I just want y'all to know, don't don't backslide. Ain't nothing out there. Ain't nothing out there. And y'all 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 sisters, uh, uh, young ladies, girls, preteen, teen. Listen, I'm gonna make your mama mad. Your mama was a whore. Don't worry about it. Because they, they, listen, they, they, didn't get, they didn't get pregnant by their first husband. They got pregnant by a boy. Now, if they got pregnant by a husband, they still married, then they wasn't. Ain't no need of them walking around afraid. I say it for you. So don't think your mama and your dad is all that. They got babies, and if they didn't get a baby, either they, 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 they took them pills or them used probolastic or did something. So y'all stop thinking that they are all that. They ain't. Just cause they won't come clean and tell you. I tell you for them. So don't, don't think they didn't mess up cause they afraid or embarrassed to tell you they messed up. Amen. I say it for you. They can get mad at me. Amen. I don't care if I'm getting mad cause I, I don't want y'all messing up. We messed up. 
we messed up too many times. I don't want y'all messing up because y'all think they didn't do it. They did it. And, 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 and they embarrassed or whatever to tell you or to say it, but that's okay. I, that's what I'm here for. I was telling them in Sunday school, Jesus is the head and, and Jesus is the heart. Well, Je let me put it like, Jesus is the head of the body. The heart, I mean, the Holy Ghost is the heart of the body. Your pastor is the mind of the body. That's why he said, love me with your heart, soul, body, and the soul, I told y'all, the soul and the body belong to you. That's what you control. But everything else is already pre, it's already, it's already got somebody in control. So when it comes to the body of Christ, I'm the mind of Christ. I tell you what the head wants to say. I tell you how the brain sending out signals and how you're supposed to receive the signal that the Holy Ghost or Jesus sends out. That's my job as a pastor. Amen. And, 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 and the people don't like to acknowledge signals. That call, they don't like being honest and telling the truth, they're liars. So I'm here to help you understand we've all messed up, still messing up, and wish we could stop messing up and come to church so we can stop messing up. That's why we come here, because we're tired of messing up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm tired of messing up. I'm tired. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Read, what does it say? I beseech you therefore, brethren, <coughs> present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, renewing of your mind that ye may prove. You got to get your mind to respond to the Holy Ghost. You got to get your mind to respond to the head. Your mind is not used to responding to what's right all the time. Say it again. Our mind is not used to responding to what's right all the time. How many times that you've told yourself, well, you know, I ought to do this. Your mind tells you, I wish I had listened to my first mind because you're not used to it. That's what you come to church for. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you get used to responding to do what's right by way of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. The title of the message today is protect your body. Protect your body. And I'm talking about your own individual physical body right now. Protect your body. Because he said present your body as a living. If you don't protect it, he don't want it. If you don't protect it and it's no good, he don't want it. Protect your body. Amen. The church, the church, the church was chosen by God. The church is God's choice. It's God's choice to carry out the gospel. It's not our choice. It's God's choice. The church. Amen. Uh, um, um, Let's go to John 15, 16 before I say something else. Amen. The church is God's choice to carry out the gospel. Nobody else can carry the gospel like the body of Christ. Now, in order to be able to carry the gospel, you got to be part of the body. If you're not part of the body, you can't do nothing. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. Beverly body, physical body, can't, can't, can't carry me where I want to go. Two different entities. Amen. He want to go to Bellflower where he live. I want to go to Bellflower. I live down the street on, in L.A. Well, I'm going to Bellflower. I can't sleep there and eat there and run around. And my, listen, that ain't my house. Amen. God say, present your body. Now, in order to do that, you got to protect your body, your physical body. John Chapter 15, verse 16, what does it say? Ye have not chosen me. I chose you. I ordain you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father in my name. In other words, you, your body, is your body is talking to my your physical body, is talking to yourself. 
you get a pain, you send a signal to your brain, and your brain tell your mind how to stop that pain. See, everybody think it's two, they one. No, they're not. They're two separate. Because my brain can tell my mind what to do, and my mind can ignore it. Because you've had pain when the brain said, fixing the mind said, we can do that later. Right. Amen? Amen. But we need each other to make it happen. I need every part of my body to get up and walk around. I need my lungs. I need, I need, I, I need every part. I need my hands. I need my feet. Amen. So you say, uh, like I was telling them in there this morning, you say you want to go to the store. The hair has nothing to do with going to the store. The hair don't help the body go to the store, does it? Has no effect, does it? it it's got a job to make me look good while I go to the store. So you, you can't leave me. I need you. I wanna look good when I walk in the store, hey, and that's your job. No, but when, listen, when I go to the store and I eat and I look good, I, you benefit. Why? Because you need vitamin E. So because of what I went to the store to get because my stomach wanted it, because my head told my mind to go get it, we went and got it, I ate it, and you benefited. Amen? And I benefited. Amen. What am I saying? We need every part of your body functioning, doing its job, otherwise you won't look good. Listen, Jesus is telling y'all right now, the only reason I chose you is to make me look good. You need to make the body of Christ look good. That's why he tell you how to dress, how to talk, how to do, because you have to make him look good. When my wife goes somewhere, I want her to look good. So they can know that's Pastor Portis. That's Pastor Portis. That's Suffragan Bishop Portis' wife. Y'all running around talking about I'm a bishop now, y'all. Listen, sister, I got to beef up Sister Portis now because she's a bishop, a suffering bishop wife. Amen. When she was a pastor. Listen, somebody said you should have been doing that. I can't think like something I'm not. Oh, hallelujah. I can't think like something I'm not because I'm not there. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I can't think like a saint unless... Are you going to get there? Jesus said, I chose y'all. I chose y'all to represent me, to make me look good. So y'all stop minimizing your duty. But you need a good body to represent me well. You can't represent Jesus well. Your body all busted up and torn up and it, because you won't eat right and exercise and do. Listen, listen, you can't tear up your body and tell my, well, you know, I still love the Lord. What didn't make me look good? Supporting on how about well, I still love you. Well, make me look good then. I've given you all the tools to make you look good. I've given the brothers and the sisters all the tools y'all need to make this church look good. But y'all won't use them. Amen. That's why I told you last Sunday at, 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 at the, the, the center when we were preaching. Why do you come to church to get better and I give you the information to get better and you won't do it? Then don't, don't come to church. Because I'm going to give you information to make the body of Christ look good. Not you to look good. Now, watch this. If you obey the information to make the body of Christ look good, you would look good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your body. Your body is not for others. Your body is not for yourself. Your body is not for anything else but Jesus Christ. That's the only purpose, reason you got a body. He said, I chose you. I chose you because I want you to make me look good. Amen. He's preparing us for a wedding. Hallelujah. He said, I don't want a body with no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. Listen, hallelujah. If all of us are parts of the body and because the foot don't work right, we ain't going to walk right, are we? So you jacking up your physical body. Now somebody said, well, something wrong with them. They got this. They got that. They find all kinds of reason to describe, oh, they must have hurt their ankle. Oh, they got a blister on their foot. Oh, they got a leg shorter than the other one. Listen, they don't know what's wrong with you, but they done found something wrong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when y'all walk around and wear the wrong clothes, somebody say, oh, well, she must be loose, or he must be a sissy, or he lazy, or he ain't got no job. But you think you ain't doing this. You causing problems in the body of Christ because you not looking good. And you can fix that problem, but you choose not to. Somebody say, well, maybe Jesus want me with a crib. Yeah, if he made you that way, but he didn't make you that way, you're doing something you ain't got no business. You're a diabetic and won't eat right. 
You're overweight and you won't put the stuff down. Amen, lights. I'm going to hurt some feelings today because it's time for us to get this body right. Get your physical body right so God can use you. God called you to do something in the body of Christ and you killing yourself. You ain't going to perform the action he needs and the body of Christ is going to hurt because you didn't do your job. Hallelujah. If my hand, Sunday school class, y'all getting a, a longer version of what I gave you. If I hurt this finger, it's bleeding. Can my foot stop it from bleeding? Can my eye stop it from bleeding? Can my shoulder stop it from bleeding? But look at all these parts of the body I got. It ain't but one thing can stop this finger from bleeding. That's this hand. He's the only one that can take his fingers and put a band-aid around them or pour alcohol or something on them and treat it. This can't do it. Look at my ear going to do it, huh? What am I saying? We need all parts of the body working. When you are not function, something is going to hurt. Something is damaged and need. Listen, I can't encourage everybody all the time. Somebody else got to do it. Sometimes you all got, listen, y'all can, but this is what y'all do. Because of what I preach, because of what the head gave me, the mind preached it. When the mind preached it, the, he told the body how to do it. So God sent the right person to talk to you. That's why you need to talk to folks with the Holy Ghost. Y'all stop getting folks. Listen, that's why some of y'all so jacked up. Y'all going to the world for advice. It's how you going to get spiritual advice from a carnal source? How can a carnal source give, how can a person ain't married tell me how to be married? One well, of my niece is going to tell me. I was talking, me and my wife were talking. Y'all know I ain't a person that say please and thank you too much to nobody. And, and. I was telling my wife, honey, I need that. Honey, you get me that. My niece going to say, Uncle John, what's the right word? I said, I don't know. I said, the right word to me is get me that over there. That's the right word to me. <laughs> what happened to please? I said, oh, we don't use please in marriage after being married this long. Unless we want something extra. And we know how to <laughs> say please. That don't work in marriage no more. Well, that's after, honey, when you've been married 25 years, then you come and tell me that you're going to be talking please and thank you all the time. Baby, can you bring me my coffee out of there? Ain't no baby, can you please bring me my coffee? And then we might not even say thank you. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Doesn't mean I ain't crazy about you. Doesn't mean I'm going to leave you. Listen, after a while, you go to a certain state. Hallelujah. They, oh, hallelujah. Listen, what am I trying to say? God said y'all ought to be old enough that I shouldn't have to pat you and thank you for everything. Haven't I always taken care of you? Haven't I always been there for you? Haven't I always provided for you? Why you think I got to give you some accolade right. just because you showed up and did your job? Come on, Pastor. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. I ain't got to say no thank you. I don't know where in the Bible he said thank you. Somebody to find that for me. I like to see that. God said, it's your duty. It's my duty to take care of my wife. It's her duty to obey me. It's our duty to do what God tells us to do. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Do what God designed you to do. He said, I called you. You ought to be thanking me that I called you. Instead of me expecting you expecting me to thank you. Listen, I don't need you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Your body is only for one purpose and one per person. Person and purpose. That's the, for Jesus and make him look good. Now present it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him whole. Don't give it to him all messed up. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are either helping or hurting God's heart. You're either helping his heart or hurting his heart. The moment too, hallelujah. When you're obeying, you're helping him. When you're disobeying, you're hurting him. Because he can easily move on. I really don't need my right hand when I don't want to use it. I really don't need it. You can say, I can say this finger is hurt. Now this hand think I need him. No, I don't. Could you put a band-aid on that for me? See, I don't need you. Amen. So I don't need you to drive. I can drive with my left hand. Amen. Oh, but you need me 
This is the hand talking, the right hand. But you need me to carry something. No, I don't, baby. Come on, help me carry this. Amen. What am I showing y'all? God don't need you. Wow. God don't. He can replace you. I can ignore this hand so long and forget I have it. And I train this hand to do more. I train these feet to do more because I don't need you no more. What am I saying? Hallelujah. God say, I chose you because I want to use you, but don't make me get so angry till I don't need you. Don't keep breaking my heart till I can, I can make things work by itself. God, we heard that old phrase, I can do bad all by myself. I don't need help to be due to Jack to, to mess up. I can mess up by myself. I don't need nobody living in the house with me, helping me get worse. I can do that by myself. Hallelujah. God said, I don't need y'all. I chose you because I want you, but don't back me up in the corner because I let you hang there and dangle and I'll never use you again because I done told them, listen, I done told the mind, ignore it. I done told the mind, ignore that right hand. We don't need it. What did I tell you to go to? You're either helping or hurting God's heart. First Corinthians chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, remember, we, we, we talking about winning soul. Talking about winning souls, y'all. Let's everybody do the job. That's everybody. You got the Holy Ghost. You need to find out what God called you to do. You need to. And stop worrying about you. Y'all stop letting people uh, uh, call you on cell phones while you're sitting in Bible class and Sunday school, Sunday morning service. Ignore that phone. You can't help nobody. Y'all sitting up here with them phones, them texts, and you call yourself reading the Bible and sending texts. You say, you don't get it. When I tell you to read, and you say you're reading, I see your shoulders moving. That means your fingers are moving. And I didn't tell you to text nobody. I said, go to St. John. Hallelujah. Y'all stop trying to be slick. Y'all can stand some more greasy. You ain't that slick. That's why, that's why some of y'all get them tickets in the car. Y'all wonder why the police know? Because he's been watching you. You ain't watching him. You're watching the road. His job is to watch folk. And listen, and then at night, you don't know your car is lit up from that cell phone. Amen. He watch you driving and you do this two or three times, you got a cell phone. Because ain't nothing down that low that important. And you're supposed to be watching that road. That means you're doing something. In other words, y'all stop acting like folk don't know what you're doing. Listen, y'all stop thinking God ain't watching you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. What about folk being sick? What you gonna do? Run to the hospital and heal them, huh? Let them go to the hospital and let the doctor deal with them. You can go see them later. If they was gonna die, they was gonna die with you there coming or, or, or in route or not being there. They were still gonna die. Stop, listen, oh, hallelujah, I'm sure, because y'all think y'all belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus Christ, oh, hallelujah. And he said, make me look good, oh, hallelujah. So the message today, I said, what? Protect your body. Protect it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. First uh, 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 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, read. What does it say? What? He talking to saved folk. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. You know, you know that ain't true for you. So saved folk. Read that again. Send us to read it. What did he say? What? Know ye not? Don't you know that God own you? Sometimes Jeremiah and Joseph talking about uh, uh, you treat us like we slaves. I say you are. You don't know that? You are a slave. Every one of y'all in here is my slave. You don't need to be holding back. I, don't I tell you what to do? But I don't mistreat you. This right arm is my slave. But I ain't going to mistreat him. I need him. But the, but the right arm will mistreat me. Give you a second to think about that. Tell you to do something, you go do what you want to do. Beverly, I need you so and so well. Now, treat me like a slave. Well, you ain't acting like one, so it don't matter how I treat you. <laughs> well, then it doesn't matter how I treat you. You ain't acting like one, so don't go around hollering about what I treat you. You ain't acting act like one. Then you can justify I treat you like one. 
So y'all want to walk around and say God want to control? Yeah, but he ain't controlling you. So what you running your mouth for? You're doing what you want to do. All he want to do is tell her what to do. Yeah, he's telling you, but you ain't listening. So why are you talking about it? Why is there a conversation? Why are you criticizing somebody to control you and you don't let them control you? Because you don't realize who owns you. Because if you knew he owned you, he's looking out for you. How, do you think I preach to make y'all mad? I preach to make you better. I preach to make you deal with reality. I preach, listen, the mind is designed to help. I'm the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here to tell you what the head said, relay it to the body so you will know what to do. If I don't tell you what to do, And, and, and you ushers, I realize y'all young people, I'm getting enough of y'all. Y'all play too much. Y'all ushers, y'all supposed to stop other folks from playing, y'all playing. And then my leader of the usher, I don't know where her mind be at. She be sitting there so in, she ain't paying no attention to none of y'all. Three, three, two of y'all back there having a party, you supposed to be ushering. What am I saying? So I'm telling you right now, I'm embarrassing you, so you say, and you'll do it again next week. So I don't understand what I went wrong at then. Because what I said didn't do nothing, went out the back door. God preached to us all the time, and it goes away, and yet we'll come back to hear something and do what we did last week. So why are you complaining then? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told you I'm going to make somebody mad today. Listen, this is the last Sunday that we get to talk about uh, 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 sacrifice. It's time for us to give up, y'all. It's time for us to just turn everything we got over to Jesus Christ and be through with it. He ain't gonna never abuse us, mistreat us, dog us out. He's just always there to help us. He's helping us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't you know? I like how Paul, what? See, this is, this is, this is how you're supposed to read this. What? Don't you know? That you are the body of Christ? You don't know that? Listen, y'all don't know that y'all here to make Jesus look good? Y'all don't know that? Y'all thought y'all was here to make yourselves look good? Y'all was doing that in the world. You didn't have to come over here to get Jesus on the inside to make yourself look good. Because we thought we looked good out there, didn't you? Every time you was in that club dancing, you thought you were doing a good job. Every time. Every time I got high off of cocaine, I thought I was the coolest Negro walking. So I already know how to make myself look good. I didn't get saved to come over here to make myself look good. I came over here to make Jesus look good. I belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, verse 20, he said what? For ye are bought with a God's I paid for you. But you ain't no slave, huh? But I bought you. I gave the devil my body so I could get you. I paid. Satan, do what you want. But at the end, I want John. Satan said, you, wanna, you want John? I'll make it easy for y'all. He told God, I want John back. Jesus, I want John back. God, he said, uh, what I got to do? He said, let me kill you the way I want to kill you. Let's go for it. Because I want John back. Paid the price, y'all. And look at the price he paid just to get John back. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Look at, oh, glory, hallelujah. Look at the price. Look at the price Jesus paid to get us back. He bought us with his blood. He bought us with, with, with bumps and cracks upside the head. He bought us and got stripped, literally, mutely. He bought us back and then we act like we don't belong to him we don't want we don't want to be slaves he paid for you too late too late I own you but because I'm such a loving God I'm going to give you the opportunity to obey me or not now that I, hallelujah that ought to make us think. God say, I bought you, but I'm going to let you decide if you're going to pay me or not. If you're going to work for me. If you're gonna, I'm going to let you decide. 
but I own you now. But it's your choice. You still don't, you can go back to that old slave if you want, that old master if you want to. I don't want you to, but if that's what you want to do. But remember, you're free. You don't have to go back to him, and you don't really have to obey me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, verse 20, are y'all with me? Protect your body. Come on, verse 20 says what? With the price. Therefore, therefore do what? Do what? How can you do that if you're blind, crippled, and crazy because you won't do right? Listen, y'all, the reason, the reason y'all stay sick a lot because y'all won't take care of your body. If y'all was to take care of y'all body, y'all wouldn't be sick. But y'all want to blame it on the devil and blame it on everybody else? Listen, if you take care of your body, you won't be sick. But you don't want to take care of your body. All you got to do is take care of your body. Lay down right there. Now you can cry all you want. Listen, all you got to do is obey. If your body say, I don't want no more red meat, don't eat it. Put the meat down. But y'all are eating me. Somebody was telling me yesterday, so yeah, the doctor told me to put meat down and my stomach was swelling up, but I kept eating it. Put the meat down. Are you going to hush? Come on, you go back to your daddy. You'll be quiet now. Put the meat down. That's all you got to do. Put the meat down. I can't eat chicken no more. Man, well, I see people cooking some barbecue chicken. You ever seen some good barbecue chicken? Let know them a little guru doing it. My body said, huh? We can't have that. We can't have that. We can't have it, John. So you got to put it down. I can't eat. I can't eat. I can't. Oh, hallelujah. I can eat all the pork I want. Don't bother me. But wait till they tell me it's bothering me. I'm like, man, seriously, Lord? I can't eat no pork now. So I can't eat beef. I can't eat chicken. Amen. How many things y'all body done told y'all to put down and y'all keep eating it? Then y'all gonna find yourself sick. Where the devil trying to get me? Your body told you to put me down. Now it's the devil's fault that you didn't put it down. I'm talking about protecting your body. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, y'all, y'all know you get out of breath because you're overweight. You know you, 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 your, your, your blood pressure up, your sugar level up, and all of that stuff, and you keep inhaling stuff that ain't no good for you. That's right. But you want God to use you to witness, and you can't walk the street for ten minutes because you're overweight, out of breath, out of shape. Right. I'm in the same boat. So I'm working hard because I got to keep, listen, I got to keep this body right. I don't know when God going to call me home, but I got to make sure that I do my job while I'm here. And I can't do it if I let my own self deteriorate. I can't blame the devil because I won't get up and exercise. I can't blame the devil because I won't put the Coca-Cola down. I can't blame the devil because I won't get up and do something to stimulate my muscles. Because when it comes time to hit the street to walk, well, you know, I ain't in shape. I can't do that. Well, you had six months and you didn't do nothing. Come on, Pastor. Protect your body. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Listen, I got to protect this body. I'm the mind of church of apostolicity for the benefit of Jesus Christ. He said, don't you know what? For ye were bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God. Glorify God in your body. How you going to glorify God in your body and you done messed it up? See, because I know some of y'all going to get an attitude, and that's good. Because y'all think y'all blaming other people and things, and it's your fault. It's your fault. Listen, I used to smoke. I think I was right around a pack a day. Listen, when I got saved, God fixed my lungs. So don't tell me God won't fix something. I know what he'll fix. I used to drink. I drank for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. And I do not have cirrhosis of the liver. Oh, Holly, so don't tell me what God can't fix. God bring you in here and he clean you up. And then you don't, you complain about how broke down you are. 
You broke down because after he fixed you, you went and got broke down again. He ain't fixing you the second time. You on your own after that because he said, I cleaned you up. You didn't like it. What do you want me to do? Clean you up again? You ain't going to like it the second time. You didn't like it the first time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, verse 20. Y'all reading with me. He said, what? For ye are bought. Josiah, I'm going to bring you up here again. Josiah. Yeah, he here. <laughs> huh? Come on. Verse 20 said what? For ye are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. In your body and in your what? That means get yourself right. Get yourself right in your thinking ability so your body can respond to how you are thinking now. You got to get your mind right, get your spirit right. You got to start thinking straight. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Protect your body. Protect your body. If your body disagrees with something you're doing, figure it out. Fix it. Stop it. Put it aside. Whatever it had to do, but whatever you do, protect it. I protect you all. This is, I'm just talking about the body of church. I protect you all. I don't want none of y'all hurt, none of y'all injured. I Oh, okay. Come on. Come on. Let's look at Roman chapter 6. Roman chapter 6. So now, I done told you who you belong to, and I done told you who you owe. Now I'm going to tell you the parts of your body you got to fix. The physical. Physical. Come on, Roman chapter 6. The physical. The physical. Roman chapter 6. You got it? Protect the physical parts of your body. You got to protect the physical parts of your body. The physical. Everybody with me? Come on, verse 13. What does it say? Don't yield your members what? Don't take yourself out there and drink. Don't take yourself out there and abuse yourself. Don't take yourself out there and do stuff you ain't got no business doing. Don't do that to yourself. Don't take yourself out there and break. Listen, hallelujah. You know good and well, uh, uh, young people, I'm going to get back on you all. Ain't no good. If you go out there and get pregnant and ain't married, you're going to make Jesus look bad. Or get somebody pregnant. You're going to make Jesus look bad. You ain't protecting your body. Now, when you get your first husband or your first wife, you're going to have problems with that other woman and that other man forever. You wonder how you get that problem in your life because you didn't protect your physical body. Not to mention you end up with some kind of venereal disease because you didn't protect your body. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, uh, Somebody was talking about they, they slept around and got AIDS and now they can't never have a normal family because you didn't protect your body. Y'all protect. Don't yield yourself instrument. Don't go out. Listen, you can say, well, Pastor, you drink and, and got high and don't have cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah, you're right. But guess what? I didn't have the Holy Ghost like you got either. Hallelujah. I didn't have nothing. Didn't have Jesus, didn't have a church, didn't have a Holy Ghost, didn't have saved parents, didn't know what to think, how to think, or when to think right. I didn't have none of what you got. You got a whole, listen, you got a, listen, you got a whole lot of stuff that I did not even have. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9, what, what was that? 6.13 again, read it. What does it say? As instruments of unrighteousness unto... Because every time you yield to unrighteousness, it's sin. Every time you cuss, you're going to cuss more. You're going to cuss more. You're going to cuss more. And then you got men that don't want to listen to you talk. I ain't going to ask y'all this so y'all don't have to answer me. I asked the brother, how many women we know that we had and we were going to take the bed and we didn't want to hear him talk, so we left them? Come on. That's right. I didn't want to hear your mouth. Shut up. I don't want to hear you talking. Now you talking too much. That's all right, baby. You can go on over here. Because now you done got to the point you can't shut up. You done turned me off. And I'm sure women then did it too, but I'm going I'm to just use the men. Come on. You're your miss. Listen, you are, you are, you are, you are, listen, lady. The Bible, I'm talking to the same lady now. Listen, the Bible tell y'all, y'all need to control your mouths. 
Y'all need to control your mouths. Y'all need to control your mouths. Ladies, control your mouth. Men, control your mouth. Men, control your mouth. Men, control your mouth. Saints, control your mouth. Saints, control your mouth. Young and old, control your mouth. People get tired of hearing the same old lame stuff that keep coming out of your twisted mind. If you're crazy, keep it to yourself. Nobody want to hear that no more. Because if you say it around us, you're going to say it to folk when you go out witnessing. Because why? It's become a part of you where they got to get used to me. Wait a minute. You want somebody to get to your old twisted behavior and you can't get used to Jesus' righteousness? You're going to yield to this, but you won't yield to this. And you call yourself saved? You say that you belong to God and God can told you to shut up and you won't shut up? So I'm talking about stop yielding yourself to instruments of unrighteousness. Do what's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Rest of the day. Say what? But yield yourselves unto God. That's who own you. God own you. Why don't you yield to him? You don't own nobody, but you want somebody, you want everybody to yield to you. Oh, hallelujah. When well, they got to listen to me sometimes, they know where in the Bible God told me to listen to no woman nor my wife. He said that to unsaved folks. Saved folks, he told everybody to listen to me. That's Bible. Rule your house with a hard iron fist. So who, who going to tell me what to do? Now he tell me to love her, but I got to control you to love you. Say it again. I got to control you I mean, to show you I love you because I'm not going to abuse you. Amen. But when you keep running your mouth, all right, baby, what did you say, baby? I remember Tonda. Tonda helped me out one time. I never forget Tonda. My wife, we've been married six months, nine months, something, maybe a year. And Tonda, and you know, Tonda, me, we worked together for 10 years. You know, you always got to have somebody to, to talk to. And I come to work one day, and I, man, my wife won't do nothing I say. And then she mess up, and I got to go back and fix it. Tonda looked at me, Tonda said, Brother John, she said, you know your wife going to mess up. He said, why don't you let her mess up and just fix what she mess up and don't say nothing. She said, sometimes, the wife did. This is a sinner. She said, sometimes us women, we know we're going to mess up, but we expect you to fix it for us. Never forgot that. I started practicing that. Marriage got better. Marriage got better. Because y'all, listen, it's in our nature to do things wrong. And I'm talking about the, the body of Christ. It's in our nature to do things wrong. And then we come to Jesus. But Jesus, at some point, at some point, John, you should know, don't do it. At some point, my wife learned not to do it. But listen, we have to go through stages. What am I saying? Listen, we done been through enough stages, y'all. 99% of y'all in here got the Holy Ghost. Y'all done been through enough stages to know what's right. Y'all shouldn't be going through these stages. Just do what he tell you to do. Come on, not through. Read it from the top. What does it say? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Why don't y'all forget you ain't dead no more? You're alive. We have risen. We didn't got up. But you're still acting like you're dead. You're still disobedient. You're still not listening. You still think you got a lot to say. Now you got a bigger fool to act like. That's all that is. You ain't got a lot to say. Just, oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's look at it. are talking about the physical. Oh, here's a good one. The mental. See, here's, here's the problem with most say for Mental. Got mental issues. Come on, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 10. We got mental issues, y'all. I call it this, stains. Learn behavior. It's mental. It's mental. It's all mental. 
Protect your body. Listen, ain't no, ain't no saint got no business going around to these, these drug dispensers. <laughs> I need it for glaucoma. <laughs> Go to Jesus for glaucoma. He said, if any sick among you, do what? Go to the elders of the church. Y'all want to go? Y'all want to go to the to the door with the green cross on it? <laughs> then you got then you got some food. Talking about when well, he got a cross on it. Well, first of all, it's a plus sign. It's really not a cross. It's a plus sign. First, see, you so messed up mental, you think it's a cross already. That's a plus. Ain't no cross. So I'm making y'all laugh because I'm finna hit you in the heart. Y'all feel good now for a minute? Okay, all right. So, so I'm making you mad and make you smile and I'm making you mad again. Come on, read what I tell you to go to. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down. Casting down. I'm going to hit them in the mouth. Cast that down. They getting on my nerves. Cast that down. I'm tired of going to church. Cast that down. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking about leading. Cast that down. Amen. I'm sick of going to church. Cast that down. I don't want to work no more. Cast that down. Amen. All that stuff that you keep getting in your brain, you keep toiling with it, playing with it, you're going to do it. And then that, that brother, fine. Cast that down. That sister look good. Cast that down. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm mad. Cast that down. I don't like. Cast that down. Casting down every imagination. Come on, read. What else he said? Every imagination that does what? And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. If you think about something and you know it go against the Bible, cast it down. Because if you don't cast it down, you're going to lose your mind. Because today I'm, cast, I'm mad at Beverly. I'm mad at Angela. Then I'm mad at Shay. And I'm mad at Roche. And then I'm mad. I'm, I'm mad. And I'm mad. Now you're mad at everybody, but you ain't mad at the right person, which is yourself. Because you won't cast it down. You ought to be mad at yourself because you keep thinking stupid stuff that ain't going to do you no good. Cast it down. Everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. God said, love your enemy. So why do you think it's okay to hate an enemy? Oh, hallelujah. Cast it down. Everything. I'm horny. Cast it down. I don't know why you young people laughing. Y'all horny half the time. And then y'all act like I'm saying something. See, that's why y'all gonna get caught. Because y'all gonna cast it down. It's, listen, God made it for you to get horny. God made it for you to lock the opposite set. But cast it down. Because it's exalting itself against God. Because you ain't married yet. So cast it down. You can't, get, you can't entertain it. Cast it down. Get it out of your head. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The only one that's having them type of affection is the one that already done slept around. Because the one that haven't done it don't quite understand it. They still like, what is that? Good. You don't need to know. Keep that monkey in the cage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. From the top, read. Verse 5 again. Casting down imagination and every knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience you know what mess people up and make them go crazy because they won't cast down crazy thoughts that's right, that's right. Amen. schizophrenic you got a voice telling you to kill somebody I got a voice telling me a whole lot of things I ain't schizophrenic because I entertain them I entertain them thoughts Keep entertaining them. Keep entertaining them. Now they become a part of my behavior because I keep entertaining them. Then y'all want to go and tell God, well, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself because you didn't cast it down. That's right. Amen. Well, Lord, I tried. No, you didn't. You didn't cast it. I told you what to do. Cast it down. But you wouldn't throw it away. You think I can't, you think I can't look at somebody and find them sexy? 
We can find anybody sexy that we want to find sexy. Include women with women and men with men if you wanted to. But you didn't learn, cast it down. Because you've been taught women ain't supposed to look at women like that. So what you do? You cast it down. Listen, men been taught, don't look at a man like you look at a woman. Cast it down. What am I trying to say? Listen, somebody told you not to drink, but you didn't cast that down. Somebody told you not to get high, but you didn't cast that down. I'm telling y'all to leave these boys and girls alone, but you won't cast that down. So don't tell me you can't be trained, you can't be taught, you can't be told how to do right. The problem is you won't cast it down. So when you act a fool 10 years from now, you forgot 10 years ago you were told to cast it down and you didn't. Now you're blaming on the devil because you wouldn't cast it down. My mama told me not to smoke cigarettes. I didn't cast it down. I looked at it. My mama told me, don't go messing with little uh, fast girls. I didn't cast it down. I went patting on them. What am I saying? We, we all get told what to do, but we don't cast. Listen, that was an imagination. Because, listen, you know why God called him an imagination? Because at that time, well, what he was trying to get you to understand, something that you haven't done or heard or seen, now you thinking about doing it. That's why that TV and, and, and Facebook and, and the phone and internet, that's why it's messing us up. Because these kids are getting a lot of imagination. Lot, we didn't get, we only had Playboy that you couldn't see. Sears catalog. But not these kids, oh no. These kids got a whole different ball game going on. Listen, God is telling y'all young people, cast the stuff. Listen, listen. If Playboy got me addicted, and I couldn't look at it, but in a quiet room with nobody around and scared, and it got me hooked, Y'all can sit in y'all bed in the, time, in the classroom, on the toilet, in the, in the, at the school, with your friends. What y'all think it's going to do to y'all? That's right. What y'all think it's going to do to y'all? And, and, and I couldn't see it but once a year. So it's a Diane, my age, she know what it's like in Mississippi. We, if, 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 even if the white man saw you looking at that Playboy magazine, across, boy, what you looking at? Ain't you less, boy? I'm going to tell her. Yes, sir, mister. Because you can't do that. Cast it down, boy. I know it's no good. It's in my store. I'm selling it. But you can't look at it. Cat, oh, cast it down. Come on. Listen, what am I saying? Because you don't protect your mind. Because you don't protect your mind. The mind is a powerful thing. Do y'all know your mind don't forget nothing you see? Don't forget nothing. It may put it on hold. It may suppress it. But as soon as you sit again, I remember seeing that somewhere. You can't put, because your mind never forgot it. Listen, you don't, what am I saying? Protect your body. Protect your body, y'all. Protect your physical. Protect your mental. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Go to Matthew chapter 22. Social. So you don't realize your social, uh, what, what they call that course you take, uh, social behavior, that ain't the word I'm looking for. Uh, sociology. Sociology, thank you. In other words, listen, it's good. It's good. Boys and girls need to hang around each other. I ain't against that. I'm against how y'all go about hanging around each other. That's why I let y'all play and have fun together, but when y'all cross the line, that's when I say something. Because y'all need that social behavior. Y'all need to know how to interact with boys, boys with girls and girls with boys. Y'all need to know how to interact, but you gotta know when, the, when somebody crossing that line. Girls, y'all gotta know when these boys are doing too much. Let me tell you something. Anytime, listen, listen girl, anytime a boy is wrestling with a girl, he's still in the field. Now, y'all girls be still in the field, too. Don't get me wrong. Remember I said I'm picking on the boys, because y'all ain't going to admit. Right. I'm telling you, them boys are still in the field. Right. That's right. 
Matthew chapter 22. They still in the field. And you look, you little old girls, y'all enjoying it. That's why y'all ain't running them away. Oh, stop. I'm sorry, that was funny. <coughs> come on, come on, Matthew chapter 22. Y'all need to be conscious of this. Social, we need, we, listen to me now, we need it, but we take it too far. We need, we need people to talk to. Remember I said, every part of your, talking about your, your physical body, every part of your body serves a purpose but it's all designed to make your whole body looks good. Listen, every one of us in the body of Christ, every one of us got the Holy Ghost. We're over here to make Jesus look good. That's right. Amen. We can't make him look good if we going around getting in trouble, doing things we ain't got no business doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's one thing, men, the, one of the problems with men, we love pretty. Pretty women, and, and and to a certain degree, we've kind of messed up the females, you know, with all of that stuff that we want to see. But I ain't gonna get into that, not today. But we love pretty. Jesus loved pretty, didn't he? Y'all ever seen some of the birds that Jesus made? Some tree? Y'all ever seen some lakes and rivers and 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 far? You ever seen? Man, you look at him, you just be in a daze. You just and and it's something about it's relaxing, isn't it? It's just relaxing because God made us that way. Amen. Amen. So what am I saying? When it comes to social behavior and how we hang out with people, yes, we need it. And yes, it's relaxing. God know all of that. But there still got to be some control. Listen, listen, I would love to be sitting on a lake fishing. That's relaxing. But I got control. I can't do that every Saturday and every Sunday. Can't hardly, I can't hardly do it once a month. Amen. Come on. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. What does it say? That ain't right. Hmm. The chapter is right. The verse is wrong. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Y'all go there for a second. No, that's right. Go back. Go back. I'm sorry. I was reading it wrong. Matthew 22. Because, well, I got to read it because I know a lot of y'all don't read your Bible. Come on. Verse 34. Let's go to verse 34. Am I helping y'all today? Amen. I mean, listen, y'all, we got to protect your body. Protect your body. Amen. When I, get through, when I get through going with this, this uh, VA Weight Watcher program, I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it on y'all. And uh, everybody that want to come, I'm going I'm to demand like they demand me. They say if I miss two, they're going to kick me out the program. I went through, I done went through the first two stages, didn't miss a day. I'm on the third one. They say, and they say, we don't care about your excuse. If it ain't, if it ain't short of you dead or in the hospital, we don't care. Because if you want to do this, let's do this. Amen. I know losing weight is hard. I'm not as overweight as some of y'all, and it's hard for me. Amen. I know it's a job to dump some weight, man. But if you make up your mind you want to do it, you can do it. You can do it. I got an exercise machine. The only reason I stopped using it, Sister Tony, because it makes my knees hurt. Because she keeps saying she's going to come take it. You know, but it makes my knees hurt. So I got to go back and do something else to get my knees ready to get back on that machine. So I had Jeremiah to give me his wee whole week because I remember when I used the wee and them different things, I lost the weight. Amen. I, listen, I'm working hard. I done put Coca-Cola down. Y'all know how I love Coca-Colas and chocolate. I had to put that stuff down. Cause it ain't good. And uh, my wife keep bringing chocolate. She, I was proud of myself when she said, "You ain't eating it." I said, "Yeah, you know, I'm glad I ain't eating it." But I sure been looking at it. Amen. So I said, "I said, well, don't bring no more, honey. If you don't bring it in here, I won't eat it. I know you bringing it because you know I love it. But I got to let this stuff go. 
I gotta let, I'm not gonna be 60 walking around with a big belly, bent over, diabetic on, I'm not gonna do that. Listen, when I die, I'm dying cause God slapped my heart to stop. It ain't gonna have nothing to do with my physical body. Listen, what am I saying? I'm gonna protect my body. God want me preaching. God want us witnessing. God want us winning soul. Protect your body. That meaning you got to protect it so when you present it to Jesus, you got something to present. Y'all want to present something broken down, busted up, and ain't no good. What you expect him to do with it? If I was to give any one of y'all a bucket to drive, y'all ain't going to put nothing in it. Y'all just going to make it ticky-tacky. And then when it stops, you're going to walk off and leave it. Because you're going to say, Pastor, you didn't give me nothing in the first place. Well, that's the way Jesus feels. Jesus said, you didn't give me nothing in the first place. So yes, I'm going to let you die. You came to me with all broken down body, and you want me to patch your body up again for you can work for me. I did that when I saved you, but you won't do right. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Verse 34 from the top. Let's read. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducee to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a law asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is what? The first and the great commandment. And the second one, what? It's like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Y'all said, what that got to do with social? Don't you get along with yourself pretty good all the time? When the last time you cuss yourself out? When the last time you push yourself around? When the last time you got so mad at yourself you wouldn't give yourself no more money? When the last time you got so mad at yourself you didn't speak to yourself and get in the mirror and tell yourself how good you look? When the last time that you didn't compliment yourself? Social, social, that means be nice to folk. You're nice to yourself all the time, ain't you? Somebody say, some of y'all said no, that cause you already crazy because you ain't been guarding your mind. That's why you can't do it, cause you already twisted in your thinking because you are already crazy. You ain't casting down. Even on my worst day, I thought I looked good. I ain't gonna never tell myself I don't look. I'm the best looking thing God ever made. Hallelujah. I say that now, yesterday, and the day before. What am I saying? Because I, I ain't got crazy to, to put myself, say I'm going to kill myself. I'm tired of living. Not like that. When I, got, when I got tired of struggles and going through life, I got me about a crown roll. I'm going to make myself happy. I ain't that crazy. So now, I'm going to come over here and got Jesus. And I want to make myself happy. Jesus. I want to make myself happy. I'm going to church. I want to make myself happy. I'm following the scripture. I want to make myself happy. He said, find joy within your own self. That's what I did in the world. But I found it in a bottle of Crown Royal, a Budweiser, a marijuana, a cocaine. Now I find it in the presence of Beverly. I find it in the presence of Angela. Now I'm sociable because I ain't crazy. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all don't get what? So I'm going to treat you right because it makes me feel good when you happy. Social. I ain't going to mistreat y'all. I need you. He said, you want to be sociable, John? Treat everybody the way you treat yourself. Am I making sense? Treat everybody the way you treat yourself and you'll always be sociable. People won't have a problem being around you. When you get tired of being around yourself, people do what? Commit suicide. Hmm. I don't think, I ain't never been tired of being around John. <laughs> So all y'all that are contemplating suicide, why? Because you got tired of your, but before you got tired of yourself, you had mental issues. You got mental issues because you wouldn't cast down. Wait a minute. You got mental issues because you didn't take care of your body physically. Take care of your body physically, you'll take care of yourself mentally, then you'll take care of yourself sociably. Hallelujah. But as soon as you break one down, you just threw in a monkey wrench. You just, you just messed up. Something gonna go wrong. Amen. You can't, you can't miss one of these ingredients and don't expect something to go. Something is going to go wrong. I ain't, listen, I ain't never disliked myself. When everybody in my family hated me, I pumped myself up. 
Nothing wrong with me. Something wrong with y'all. Don't I tell y'all that to this day, James? Nothing wrong with me. Something wrong with y'all. Y'all ain't going to ever get me to think something wrong with me. You ain't going to listen. I'm social. Because if I was to begin to think like that, that means I'm going to think something wrong with you. Because something is wrong with you. You know that? But I'm going to be sociable. I'm going to treat you like ain't nothing wrong with you. Because if I go to letting you affect me, whoever control your emotion control So I think you're all right, Sarah. I don't care what your sister say about you. I love you. <laughs> Amen. I don't care what people say. I love y'all. Why? Because I know I'm not going to let you get in my head. Because I got to be. Didn't he just say, love them the way you love yourself? Now, let's deal with reality. I know I got things wrong with me. But watch this. Because I'm not crazy, I don't let them affect me. So because I don't let them affect me, and I know something wrong with you, I ain't going to let yours affect me. So I'm going to treat you like I treat me. So I ignore all of my flaws, don't I? I'm going to ignore hers. Didn't he say treat them? Like they treat yourself? Don't you ignore your flaws, Milo? Ignore your mamas. Talk about sociable. The, oh, go, listen, I got to keep going because y'all ain't getting it. The reason people have problems with other folks because they don't ignore their own problem. That's why you can't ignore somebody else's problem. You get practice ignoring yours, get some practice ignoring them. They, you know, hallelujah, you know they gonna act a fool. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Amen. We all know we got problems, don't we, Dre? We ignore our own problems. Well, it's time for you to ignore your buddies. Don't that make sense? Ain't nobody in here. But see, watch this. I refuse to sit around and act like I don't have them. I ignore them because I'm working on them all the time. Listen, I got sense enough to know, Jody, that you're working on your problem. Because the Bible done told me, I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I wrestle against spiritual weak. I'm wrestling against those high places trying to mess with your head. So when I see you doing things that's crazy, Lord bless them. So, cause that's what happened. That's ain't that what you do when you mess up? Lord bless me. Oh, Holly, come on! Don't you say when you know you ain't doing. Don't you say, Lord help me, Lord bless me, Lord stop me, Lord encourage me, Lord teach me. Well, play that for somebody else when you see them messing up. Lord help them, Lord bless them, Lord encourage them, Lord do something. Holly, what am I saying? Treat them the way you treat yourself, and you will be sociably accepted. Regardless of what people say. Because they're going to know. you nice all the time. When they know they made you mad and you didn't show it. Oh, you always nice. You always do this. Because why? I'm dealing with you the way I deal with me. I ain't going to hold nothing against you. Because I sure ain't holding nothing against John Ford and Porter. And if I do, you ain't going to know nothing about it. So if I hold something against you, you ain't going to know nothing about it. Because everything I'm going to do, I'm doing it, what they say, on the down low, because I'm working hard to not think like that. Because I don't want to think like that. I know I'm thinking wrong. Because why? That's why I got to cast down every imagination that exalted itself against the power of God or not. Because it will mess you up. The reason, oh, hallelujah. The reason we get messed up, because we won't stop thinking fast now. I'm not taking myself. I'm not taking. Uh, I remember one time, brother, a brother told me he was working. He's a construction worker, Caltrain, and they gave him an address to go to a, a specific spot. And he was in San Bernardino, and he made the wrong turn, and he wasn't really watching. He saw the sign, but you know, you didn't see the sign because you know when you lost, you kind of only looking for the signs you're looking for. You read something else, your brain don't really register. You saw it, but no, because you don't, you, you're trying to get where you're going. Turn the corner. <laughs> Turn the corner. And he was on a new beach and a girl was bent over. <laughs> he said, what 
uh, and then he said, he turned around. He said, but Brother John, that image stayed in my head a long time. He said, I got to keep casting that down. He said, and I know how to get back to that beach anytime I want to. He said, but I'm fighting not to go back all the time because of something I saw. And it got it, so I got to cast down this imagination all the time till I get it out of my system because, listen, I do know how to get back there. <laughs> what am I saying? You see how the mind works? You see something? Get you all upset and moving, and you all of a sudden, your brain won't help. Okay, okay. I gave y'all a high tech one. Let me give you a lightweight one. How many of y'all got a song? If you sing it right now, you ain't sung that song in 10 years, you still know the word to that song. But you can't sing in the name of Jesus. You know why you can't sing spiritual songs? Because you cast them down. You don't want to learn them. But songs you love, what you don't want, you cast it down. What you do want, you take it in. You can forget you can forget a song that God wants you to sing. You can forget a scripture. Quote Matthew chapter 5, verses 3, 4, and 5. Don't, I said quote it. Quote it. That means don't read it. Quote it. Come on, quote it. Quote it. Come on. Ever since y'all met me, we've been reading them, them three scriptures. Quote it. Why you can't quote it? Because you cast it down every time I have you read it. That's why you ain't poor in spirit. That's why you ain't mourning. Because you cast it down. Am I making my point? Now think about a song that you love. Don't sing it. I don't want to hear it. Sing a song that you know you ain't sung. Who grew up listening to Tupac? You know a Tupac song, don't you? I'll give you a break since you just got saved. You know a Tupac song. You can sing it right now, can't you? But you can't quote Matthew 5, 3, 4, and 5. Hmm, isn't that a shame? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that, y'all? Because you, listen, you cast down stuff that you need. That's why he said, this is what you're doing. You're making your body an instrument of unrighteousness. Amen. Protect your body. And I, I hope y'all get in the message. Protect your body. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. See, y'all ain't mad. I know you ain't mad. Maybe mad at yourself. Like, Lord, you're right. This ain't right, Lord. I got to fix this. Now, that's the way I feel and felt. I got to fix this. This ain't right. This ain't right. This just ain't right. After you died for me and what you did for me and how you protect me and I treat you like this, this ain't right. It ain't right. Come on, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 said what? Therefore. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. Talking about social. How do you want people to treat you? Come on, all y'all. Respect. So that means you don't never cuss no more when you talk to nobody. You want them to respect you? Somebody call you out your name? Nobody in here want anybody talking behind their back and talking about them. So don't you talk about nobody no more. Nobody in here want to say that somebody is crazy. Amen? Why are they in there? What's happening? Huh? Well, if she going to the, she know where the lady bathroom is, right? Oh, okay. Uh, so he said, read that verse again. Whatsoever, you don't want nobody disrespecting you, do you? Some of y'all in here don't talk to nobody. Some of y'all in here, you come in and sit down and you don't talk to nobody. 
Supposing everybody came in here and don't talk to you no more, would you be okay with that? No, you wouldn't. Because you'll go out and say nobody like you. Well, you ain't liking nobody either. The Bible said you win friends by showing yourself. See what I'm saying? So you expect people to come to you and say hi to you when you sit down and won't get up and say hi to nobody? I'm the pastor. I'm the doctor. I'm the suffering bishop. Amen. I'm, I'm, I got a whole lot. I come to all of y'all and hug you. I got time. Why? Because I want y'all to come to me. I tell y'all, no, nobody leave this church without hugging me. I should get a hug from every one of y'all before y'all leave. And some of y'all don't bring me no hugs. And then as soon as I don't come to you, pastor got favored. Well, I guess you must have them too, because I must not be your favorite, but you won't come to me and give me no hug. I'm just showing y'all how you expect folk to do for you, but you won't do for other people. Something wrong with you. That, that didn't start today. That started, why? Your social behavior is messed up because you're crazy. Because what? You won't cast down every imagination because you don't like the way he talks. Cast it down. If you learn to cast it down and learn how to take care of yourself physical, then, oh, hallelujah. One thing leads to the next. Come on. Come on, got some more. Come on, we're going to quit. Come on, John chapter 10. Walk around, you don't want to talk to folks. Something wrong with you. You got mental problems. Something wrong. Something is wrong. Come on, chapter 10, verse 10. Read. What does it say? The thief cometh what? But for to steal and to kill and to destroy I've come that you might have life and that, that you might have it more abundantly God is saying I'm coming so you can enjoy the fullness of being saved being a human, being on this earth being around people, he said I'm coming because I want you to have a wonderful time hallelujah, I give you a preacher to tell you where you're going wrong so you can have a wonderful time, I give you knowledge so you can enjoy coming to church, going to school, going home, sitting at home, in the go. I want you to go somewhere and represent me and make me look good. Hallelujah. So I got to strengthen you. I got to educate you. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The only reason you failing because you won't do what I tell you to do. That's the only reason you failing. That's the only reason you squirrely in the head. Learn behavior. Shake, shake that stuff, man. Hallelujah. He said, I come that you might have life. What did he say? And life. And you might have it what? Where you like to go and have fun at? What's one of your favorite places you like to have fun at? Give me one. Angie, give me one. Oh, USC football. USC football. You have fun, huh? Oh, yeah. You can, you probably had that kind of fun here. Amen. You probably had that kind of fun at home. Amen. You probably had that kind of fun at work. Amen. You probably had that kind of fun in the grocery store. Amen. More abundantly. Remember one time me and, me and my wife went Kenny. I don't know if Jeremiah was here. Me and Kenny used to go in store and we'd play football. Remember one time we was in um, Big Lot. We can't see each other, Brother Tim. He way on the other side. I just know where he at. You got all of these eyes. I throw the football. Boom. I hear Kenny. Catch it. I got it, John. I said, throw it back. I see the football come flying. I got to run. <laughs> Catch it. I said, Kenny, say something. I don't know where he at now. He said, I threw the ball. He missed it. We broke something. <laughs> I said, Kenny, you missed. My wife said, I knew y'all was going to break something. I said, Kenny, I said, go tell him, give us a broom, clean it up. I said, it's called twenty four ninety five. I took it up there and paid for it. Guess what the manager said? He was a man. He said, I knew y'all was gonna break something, but I was having fun watching y'all. <laughs> but I went right up there and paid for it. What am I saying? I'm having fun no matter. Oh, y'all don't. I'm gonna have fun. I don't care where I go. I can, I can pay $30 for something. I'm ready to break. Listen, I know something's gonna get broke. I'm gonna pay for it. But right now, me and my son gonna have a memory we ain't gonna never forget. Playing football in a store and we can't even see each other. Hallelujah. What are you trying to say? I like to have fun. I like to go to church and have fun. I wanna go to the beach and have fun. I'm gonna enjoy life a bunch. But guess what? I'm gonna live saved. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
had a church cap on. <laughs> what am I saying, y'all? God want us to have fun. That's why I love Jalen. I ain't forgot what you and your friend told me. I, I give young people uh, <laughs> restricted freedom. Let's have some fun. We can go to these places and have fun, but we say we're going to make, so let's go with our Jesus only. Let's go with our stop saying, let's go and represent Jesus, but we're going to have some fun. Go have some fun. Wait till James, wait till, wait till Sam get a little bigger. You probably already start doing some crazy stuff with your boy. Hey man, you got some good girls. They'll be, mom and dad, you didn't throw me one. Come on, look at one more, then I'm going to let you go. Galatians chapter 5. What am I saying? Gosh, I come for y'all to have some fun. But just don't, mis just don't misrepresent me. Don't misrepresent me. Y'all misrepresent him too much. Because y'all don't want to take care of your bodies. All of y'all that have learned the rule of stop littering, don't it feel good not to litter? And when you see other people littering, don't it kind of kind of jacks you up, don't it? But remember, you used to throw paper out the car, too. Until you got taught better, huh? You didn't learn that in school. You didn't learn that in your mom and daddy's house. You learned that in what? In the body of Christ. Amen. Jesus taught you that. Because it's so much, oh, hallelujah. Some of y'all cars got so much trash in it. Y'all, uh, you're supposed to clean your car out at some point, you know? <laughs> Come on. Galatians chapter 5. I hope I didn't help y'all today. Hope I didn't help y'all. Hope I didn't help y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Social, social. Come on. Galatians chapter 5. Go to verse 22. We're going to read these, these real quick. Chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Listen, young people. Listen. Listen. Listen, some of y'all was to Simone, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah too, Joseph, uh, Jason, Jalen, uh, who was it? Kennedy, where she go? She left? All right there. Listen, y'all getting ready to go where your parents ain't going to be hounding you and monitoring you like they used to. They going to do it, but it gradually drifts off. Y'all got to learn to do right. Remember what you've been taught. That's, that's, that's the best I can tell you. Just remember what you've been taught. Don't, don't go out there and break what you, the rules you've been taught. Y'all don't, some of y'all been born in the church. Y'all don't know nothing else. Amen. Don't go out there thinking y'all can deal with them thugs and demons. Let's just say demons. You can't handle them demons out there. Especially being as, as, as green as you all are. Y'all are green. And the devil will have a field day with y'all. Come on. Chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 say what? Well, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against? Let, now watch this. Just imagine. Just imagine. If you got all these attributes, can't nobody upset you. You love everybody. Can't nobody get on your nerve because you're temperate, you're long-suffering, you're gentle, peace, goodness. I, I thought about, just thought about what Simone told me. Where's she at? Is she here? I don't see her. Oh, but anyway, yesterday she was telling me she, after they got through serving all of the people, and they didn't have a whole lot of people compared to what I know we could have had. Simone said, Pastor, I can't do this no more. <laughs> and I'm going, you know how you have, I got to comprehend what you're talking about. You just start talking. She said, I can't do this no more. I said, what? And then Twyla chimed in and said, Pastor, you know how when people get to act no food and they won't? I said, Simone, but you did it. She said, yeah, I did it, but I can't do it no more. Yes, you can. 
You did it the first time, you can do it over and over and over. You get experience. The more experience you get, then you get to the point, oh, yeah, I'm used to you. Yeah. Then after a while, people come in there and they act a fool. Well, give me this. Oh, you sure? I can give you a little bit. Did you want? Now you find yourself pleasing them after they act a fool because you got experience. Oh, hallelujah. You get good at anything. The more you do it, the more you do it, you become more sociable. Now, when they leave there, they going to remember them were the nicest people. Why? Because I acted a fool and they, <laughs> and they still treated me nice. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen, the Bible said when folks act a fool and you treat them nice, God said, I'll make them remember you. you ain't, they ain't got a choice. God said, I'm going to make them remember you. Then next time they see you, they're going to be nice to you. Remember, love is not what you can give to me. It's what I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to teach you how to love because you don't know nothing about it. You love yourself. I love me and you. I'm going to treat you the way I want to be treated. I don't want nobody, I don't want to go up and act a fool asking somebody for some food. So I ain't going to, I'm going to treat you like you don't know what you're doing. I'm going to treat you with love. Watch this. Come on, joy. Happy all the time. The only reason y'all argue with people, because y'all get an attitude and get mad. Stop getting mad, it ain't an argument, is it? I said, y'all missed that. The only reason you're arguing with Jane, because you get mad, because you think he disrespected you. That's the only reason you're arguing. Whether he did or not is irrelevant, because you're supposed to be, what, long-suffering. You're supposed to be making peace. So how are you going to be making peace and long-suffering when you get an attitude because he got on your nerves? Hmm. God said, y'all get these, oh, glory. Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying, man. If y'all get these attributes, you can be amazing. Come on, gentleness, goodness. And no matter what, have some faith. I don't care what happens in this world, Jesus got my back. I don't care what happened in this church, Jesus got my back. I don't care what happened in my life, Jesus got my back. Why? Because I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in, I am going to be content. Why? Because Jesus, come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Please. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, come on, minister. I know somebody wants some prayer. Listen, let's enjoy life. But let's enjoy it, doing it according to the word of God, not according to what we want. What's the title of the message today? Protect your body. I'm talking about your physical body. If you protect your physical body, you're going to automatically protect the body of Christ because you got to protect. Because remember, you belong to Jesus. And if you belong to Jesus, if you belong to Jesus, can we, I think I preached a sermon some time ago, let's make Jesus look good. Didn't I preach that something? Make Jesus look good. Listen, make Jesus, when you, when, listen, when you make yourself look bad, you make ch Church of Apostolicity look bad, you make me look bad, you make Jesus look bad. Protect your body. Protect your body. Protect your body. Don't worry, I'm on, I'm on God gonna bless me. I'm gonna get a little mini gym, a gym somewhere in the church. And we're gonna, we gonna work on all this obesity, y'all. Amen. 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 We're gonna work on it. Amen. Cause I'm gonna work y'all when it comes to serving God. Y'all need, need to be healthy. <laughs> all right, come on. I feel good, I'm having fun. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, huh? Lord. No, Thank you. Come on, y'all get prayer. Just say, Lord, help me. Help me to protect my body. Help me to become more to sociable. Help me to protect my mind. Just help, help me. I just need help. Just help, help me. Because I know I'm doing things wrong. I know I'm doing them wrong, and, and, and I'm not fighting them. I'm not casting down these imaginations that are exalting itself. I need to cast down these imaginations. I need to cast them down. I need to cast down these imaginations. Because they do come. They do come. 
they do come. I just want to thank you. I want to cast down these imaginations that exalted itself. In other words, they're getting hard. What he's saying, they're they getting harder and harder to fight. Because y'all not fighting them. You got to cast them down. You got to say, no. I ain't thinking like that. No. I'm not going to do that. No. No. I know it's wrong and I'm not going to think it. No. No. I know I locked it and I want to lock it again. No. Cast down these imaginations that exalted itself. That exalted itself. It's causing you confusion in your head because you won't fight them. Get them out of your mind, they'll get out of your head. But if you don't get them out of your mind, they're going to stay right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Fight, fight. That's what Paul said. Put up a good warfare. Fight, fight, fight. You ain't fight the devil. You fighting yourself. So stop thinking it's the devil. It's you. Because you won't cast down the imagination. Cast it down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One thing you got to remember, the body, your body, your body is of supreme importance to God. In other words, your body is very valuable to him because with your body, without your body, he can't build the body. He can't build the body of Christ without your body. He can't build the body of Christ without your body. He needs your body. He needs your body. He needs you to go out witnessing. He needs you to go out helping. He needs you to go out encouraging. He needs your body to go help build his body. Some of us are red blood and white blood cells. Something about that, don't they build themselves, replenish themselves or something like that? Amen. Some of us going to die, let's replenish. Let's bring somebody else in to take my place as a red blood cell. White blood cell. Get somebody else in to replace yourself. Hallelujah. So when you gone on, that, that gap, there's no gaps. You feel that spot. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Protect the body, y'all. That's all we're talking about. Protecting the body. Your physical body. To protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Protect your body. Come on, Aaron Cassini. Protect it. In the future, when the line gets long, y'all get up because I forget. Y'all just get up. Protect it. Protect it. Protect it. Protect, 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 protect. Protect your body. 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 Physically, mentally, and socially. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad you're saved? I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. So glad I'm saved. I wouldn't have it, hallelujah, no other way. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep singing. Thank you, Jesus. You searched all over, couldn't find nobody. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless them all, Father. Hallelujah. Bless them all. Bless them all. Bless them all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Couldn't find nobody. Hallelujah. Still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. There's nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Searched all over, y'all couldn't Still find nobody. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody, greater. nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's nobody, nobody greater, greater than, than you. Come on, let us stand. Y'all know nobody there's no greater. night service, but we're having 3.30 service at Bishop Petty. It's anniversary service. I'm the speaker. Amen. So I want everybody there. Choir, I want the full choir. Mass choir singing. Y'all know they're going to have you sing two or three songs, so y'all might as well get ready. Starting at 3.30. Amen. 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 So y'all come on at 3.30, and then after that, I know we were scheduled, we was going to go to the beach, but I heard it's going to be too cold and it's raining. So I don't want to go out there and set up and it rained and we're trying to run. We, we have to come up with something else later. All right? So y'all get the night off. I want to thank everybody that helped us out too with uh, Bishop, Bishop Greer's funeral. Amen. Y'all did a wonderful job. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you for showing up and helping. Amen. We showed them what love is about. Y'all should feel proud that y'all show people what it means to show love. We don't want nothing in return. We've already been blessed. God have already rewarded us. Amen. All right, who opened up? Come on, Tiana. Are you going to close? Let her close. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please bow your heads. Father God, in the first name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this service, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor preaching yes. to us, Lord God. Good preaching. Uh, we want to thank you for letting everybody be here, Lord God. Let us come at the next appointed time. Amen. Amen. Good preaching. I'm good preaching. <laughs>